Okay, here's my install of the Cloud42 uh, ELS, our electronic lead screw. Um, I wasn't able to get the board from him, uh, the custom board that actually fits on top of the TI controller. So I ended up mocking up my own. Um, one other, uh, I guess the outcome of that is I don't actually have memory storage that actually was on that board. And I'm actually directly powering my board from a USB. Aside from that, the rest of it is actually pretty much close to uh, James's uh, implementation idea. So I made a custom case for mine, uh, laser cut uh, with a you know pin infill, um, low profile. Uh, it does stick out a little bit above my RPM meter. Uh, this is, by the way, a uh, Precision Matthews Precision Matthews. 1022V, uh, uh, and uh, even though it sticks up, no big deal. It'll probably just help keep stuff from falling off. Uh, next up is uh, uh, the encoder install, and I used a slightly different encoder. It's a 1000 pulse encoder, um, very similar to other specs, uh, and the mounting of that is uh, from... Um, same size pulley to same size pulley. A matter of fact, these pulleys were identical, but I had trimmed uh, both sides and removed the edges uh, so that it matched the gear spacing that was there before. And just go ahead and remove that and place that back over there after I had done some turning on it. Um, I did some 3D printed plates to actually support the bearing or the pulley. Uh, there's bearings in there. I don't know if you can see that in there. And uh, uh, that way we don't actually have a load on the encoder itself. The encoder itself actually, uh, instead of actually having an external shaft, actually has a hole where you can tighten it up on top of a shaft. And that allowed me to actually make one complete shaft that actually goes from first plate with bearing through the pulley into another plate with a bearing. And then, um, then it actually has this nice float mount uh, so that it actually wiggles a little bit in case there's like some errancy in the uh, shaft. Um, next up, I did a uh, um, buried in my servo in the cavity below um, the bed in the casting. I was actually able to just use these two mounting holes uh, that were there, one for the banjo, the other one uh, obviously for the um, cover. Uh, and I actually had used the cover one over here. I still need to actually add a screw back up for that top one because right now I just have the tension on this, but it seems pretty, pretty well enough, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then the, uh, I have three to three to one, three to one uh, gear ratio on the pulleys, and then it snakes back down into the controller that's underneath the power supply for the controller. Uh, power strip uh, that actually hooks up to that power supply and uh, also the USB controller and that all sneaks back up into the machine. Uh, I actually buried my controller in the machine. Um, it all seems to work fine uh, on mine. I actually just set it for uh, uh, the normal feed in and then the one to one gear ratio. The other two are going to be unused in the future. Then either that or I could just actually use them but it doesn't matter. And then there is the end. And just turning it on, you can see it all firing up. And this is the, actually the latest release as, as of yesterday uh, of uh, the software from James. And uh, if we turn it on, and get it so it runs. You can see it turn the way through. Four ports. And if we actually change modes here to like feed in, like one of the things that was actually kind of neat about this is that you can uh, orally hear the difference in the speeds. And not so much that, let's go back to the feed through. So 
that seems to work fine. Uh, and under load and all that. I've done quite a few tests for metric and imperial uh, um, screw uh, threading and I had no issue whatsoever. Uh, I did have some issue because I'm an idiot and was pulling the wrong lever when I was actually doing my threading test, but at you yeah, well. So it seems to work well. I'm pretty damn happy with it. Uh, we got rid of all of the greasy, gooey parts that were back here, and uh, I may have to do a, just a little bit more cleanup before I just cap her on up. Um, thank you, James, for excellent work. Uh, this is a beauty in place. I'm so glad to actually be able to change through different uh, uh, threading configurations without having to go through the gear changes. It's a winner. Thank you very much. Have a good day.